Oh, well, hello, good morning. Welcome back to another muscle fishing film. Hope you're doing well, hope your week's going well. Um, well, today I'm actually doing something which I quite enjoy, and it usually produces quite a lot of fish. Small fish though. Uh, we're going to New Haven, uh, and we're gonna do some uh, LRF fishing. So we're gonna use tiny little bits of rag or lugworm, so I have 16 hooks, and uh, we're gonna try and try and bag as many species as we can. It is a little bit early in the season, uh, however, hopefully we can bag, you know, a couple of fish for you. Um, we're gonna go for two or three hours and that's it. Let's uh, make sure we don't kill ourselves before we get there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're just gonna use little pattern oster rigs really and tiny little weights. And uh, yeah, I'll show you the tactics and bits and bobs when we're there. We say LRF fishing, which stands obviously for light rod fishing. Um, which is exactly what we're doing, but we're not using lures, uh, so we're not going the traditional route. So I hold my hands up, we are using bait, and we're not using lures. So uh, apologies for the traditionalists out there, which will be scorching me, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, we've got some disgorgers packed as well, which are a really important bit of kit when you're going LRFing, um, because little wrasses and gobies and things, they can swallow the hooks, um, and you want to be able to get them out uh, easily. So a little disgorger, a little coarse fishing plastic disgorger, really, uh, really does good. Um, so yeah, right. I'm gonna concentrate on driving, get us there safely, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you at Newway. Right, so we are here, and we parked just there. The park in there is actually free. As long as you're not on that yellow line, you'll, um, you pretty much won't get done. So obviously you can sometimes park further up, uh, and you can get a space, but sometimes it's a little bit busy. So um, if you come down here at the right time of year when it's not too busy, uh, uh, midweek, you know, the weather's not great, you can normally park there for free. You don't have to go all the way up to the car park. So this is the mark. I think we filmed here once before. I can't believe I've not filmed here more than that, really. Um, it's a great, great little spot to come down and catch a load of fish. Wherever we will today, it's a bit early season, but look, I've got a little bag there got a little rod here and that's all you need so simple so easy um, you can pretty much be in and out of the house as long as your rigs are ready within five minutes so let's go and see how we get on right so we've uh, we've got down here ideally we should really have got here about an hour earlier but we will be all right we can still we can still fish this bit probably for half an hour 45 minutes and then I'll have to go up to the corner and fish I'll very quickly show you the rigs because I want to get fishing it's they're super simple guys we've got a loop in the top which connects to your link clip on your rod and you've got two little booms with size i think those are size 12 hooks coming off we've got some with size 16 hooks in there as well so i might scale down if we miss in bites we're just going to put on a tiny bit of lug worm we've got a weight on the bottom there which could be could be smaller really but um i'd imagine we're gonna lose some gear so i'm just gonna quickly lob this in and uh, and get going so that's the rig this is the arm we're fishing on and yeah see how we get on Right guys, we are ready to fish. Flick it out into the middle, let it sink, stay in contact with it the whole time because you will snag up otherwise. And I would imagine I'm gonna snag almost instantly and lose gear, but if you stay in contact with it, hopefully you can avoid that. By using a tiny weight, you can also sort of avoid it a little bit more, but I haven't got that many on me. Um, I just wanted to get down there quickly and this was the one set up, so see how we get on. If you get down here at low, low tide, you can actually, you can see the bottom and you can see where it's snagging, you can see where it's not, but I haven't done that today. Um, and to be honest, I can't quite remember what it's like down here. It is a little bit snaggy, I've lost a lot of gear, but not loads and loads and loads. Right, all efficient, so that's good. Yep, Sean. Fish on guys, it's a little, it's quite a big ball, uh, ball and rass. Oh, well hopefully you got that one on camera. We've got a little ball and rass, very dark colours. And actually that's not a bad size for here. That's not a tiny, tiny one. Um, yeah, that's a ooh, little ball and rass. Quite happy with that. There we go. Hopefully you got the, the bite and the, the fight on camera. I'm pretty sure you did. I'll get a little photo and uh, get it back. 
So we really timed this a little bit late to be honest. Um, we will have to move up already uh, in a little while. Quite a big tide, so it's going to come above here quite quickly. But what I'll do is I'll move, I'll move to that corner later on and give it a go. You'll see me every so often lifting the rod tip. And what I'm doing, I'm just picking the weight off the bottom and putting it back down again as to try to not get snagged. And that little bit of movement of the bait can sometimes entice a bite. So we've got no bait on, see? So something's been pecking at it. New bit of bait, so you always got to check that. It does disappear quite quick. I'll risk it for a chocolate biscuit and go a little bit further out. Oh, fish on, fish on, guys. Fish on, yeah, better one as well. Whee! Same one, yes. So, that's another ras. Another little ballon ras. taken on a little size 16 so kept, kept dropping that weight back and back and back and then we found a little pocket a little hole dropped it and there we went little little ras all right so got that disgorger this is a coarse fishing disgorger but they're excellent for little fish put a little bit of tension on the line there's a little groove in there set the line in the groove like that find where your hook is and pop it out instantly there we go Nothing much, i.e. everything. <laughs> Fish on guys. Hey, another species. Yep. Gobies. Bass, bass bait. So there's another fish there. That is a Tom Pot Blenny. You see his little eyebrows on top. Um, Cool little fish. Caught a lot of these in Spain, but there you go. Little little Tom Pot Blenny, happy days. Right guys, we just caught that uh, that little Blenny. We are gonna have to move in a minute because it's coming, the tide's coming really high and the ferry's gonna come through in a sec and it's gonna go right over the top of us. I've just moved up one bay just to see if we can pinch one or two more fish before we've got to move up there. But we will give it a proper go up there because I've caught quite a lot of fish there in, in the past, so. Hopefully, nab four or five fish. That's not bad, is it? Two rats and a little Tom Pot Blenny for a sort of late March day. It's all right. Yeah. Oh, oh no, snag. <laughs> well, we were always get, we were going to hit one eventually, guys. We were going to hit one eventually. So when you're walking along here, you'll see a load of green uh, sort of weed, very, very slippery. Try and have sort of one foot on here, this hard bit, and one, one on this sort of groove, it's a little bit safer. All right, so we've come up uh, this end now, because obviously the tide has covered the area we were at. Um, I'm just going down with the same rig, but I've got two little limitless floating attractor beads. Who knows if they'll help or if they won't. Did quite well in um, uh, Torquay on those actually. I've got quite a few little rats on those. So, well, I didn't get rats, we got a little pouting. Um, might have to have a bit of a heavier weight though, because the weight's going. Ooh. Can't always be catching you 15 pound pollock guys, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sometimes we've got to be out here just catching what's around. Um, because the beach fishing at the moment in the day doesn't doesn't particularly inspire me. <laughs> I'll tell you something guys, we are working hard to try and find you some more fish. Um, I'm holding on because if I let go I will fall into the sea. Um, sm smells of wee, uh, <laughs> but we're in a new location trying to find you some more fish. So I'll bring the camera over, set ourselves in that corner and see if we can get some more uh, little species. Right guys, we're at our new location. It's actually, it's a bit hairy getting here, but when you're here, it's um, it's actually all right. It's quite safe. It's quite flat. I wouldn't um, 
certainly not for the faint hearted, but never fish this bit, so I don't know what the snags are like, it could be awful, I don't know. Already oh, lost about three weights today. The things you do in the hardest season to catch and fish. Late March and April, I personally find the worst uh, time of year for beach fishing uh, and inshore anchoring. As soon as you get to about May, you get a few summer species arriving, the bass arrive, obviously following the bait, and then it's game on. So we've still got really about a month uh, until it starts to pick up possibly. Ah, gutted, just lost another little Tom Pot Blenny. Uh, just about to swing it in and it just knocked the wall and off it went. <laughs> But that's good, there's, there's fish here. We found some guys, we found some. Let's see if we can get one. I get asked quite a lot on the YouTube videos why I've got um, some foam on my rods. Um, I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. A lot of these rods I use in my kayak and my polycraft, my small boat, and the chances of them ending up overboard are more considerable than if you are on a proper boat or if you were uh, fishing oh there's a snag now we're out of it good uh more considerable if you're fishing on a, a proper boat you know or a charter boat you're not really going to lose your rod there but there's a very good chance that um <laughs> the rod will go overboard on a small small boat or a kayak so that just makes the rope rod float and hopefully i'll be able to grab the rod and, and not lose it so i'm going to turn this camera around and you can see the ferry going out it reverses out So you can see it's in stern and it's coming out. It's quite quick. It's actually going really, really fast. Unfortunately, we couldn't pick up another fish. We lost that little Tom Pot Blenny here, which uh, proved the point. Move around, try and find the fish, and you normally will. Um, it's a little bit early in the season uh, to get prolific catches, to be honest, but I sort of knew that. I just wanted to come down and have a little bit of fun. Um, I met a friend down here as well, so it's just nice to have a little chat, a little catch up, and just, yeah, see what's popping. So we're gonna go home now and uh, go to the gym set up for this evening because we're going to go fishing this evening. Don't know what we're going to do yet. We're going to go ray fishing or eel fishing. Not sure yet, but we'll work it out. Thank you for watching. I know it's a short little video, but I hope you've learned a couple of little bits and bobs. And uh, if you've got any questions, give us a shout. So have a great week and take care. Cheers.